Hello, and welcome to the show Gold Squadron Gays. It's the podcast where two Star Wars loving gays break down each episode of their favorite Star Wars TV shows while also being gay as hell. I'm your host, Bradley Brower. And I'm Charles Rogers, and welcome to our Book of Boba Fett coverage that will dominate our life for the next two months. <laughs> We are officially Book of Boba stands because this is it. No more, no more one-off episodes. We have a theme now. The album artwork will have changed. We're back. We're back Allegedly. to the basics. We are back to the basics. We had some fun. We had some fun one-offs. Um, fun times. We had the High Republic one that you didn't have to do shit for. I love that one. Um, you you haven't even listened to that. I one. have not even listened. Don't to listen it. to that's that how one. My, that's how much I love it. <laughs> you loved that you didn't have to do anything for that one except slap things in the time code where I told you. True. Well, I did. Uh, I did kind of kind of listen to it when I was kind of piecing it together for air. I did technically listen to a little bit of it. I didn't quite understand most of it, but I was listening to a tiny bit of it. Uh, fun fact, listeners, uh, about how the sausage is made. Uh, when I sent Bradley a list of time codes, so I sent him, put the intro here, put the outro here, put the ad break here. Uh, I also sent him the time codes where we threw shade at him so that he would specifically know. Now, I don't know whether or not he actually went and listened to them, but he did know where they were. The world may never know. The world may never know. Well, Bradley, of before we jump into our Book of Boba episode zero speculation, uh, I have a serious thing and I have a fun thing. Okay. So we'll do the serious thing first and get it out of the way. Now, Bradley, you don't really play video games. You don't know what a video game is. Not unless Mario is punching right. Zelda in the face. I don't really play those video games. So this is really a conver- we're also not a video game podcast, nor are we a general all of Star Wars podcast. We are specifically Star Wars TV. So this is a conversation that I need to have directly with our audience. Uh, Bradley's going to sit off in the corner for a minute. So over the intervening time while we were on break, a new High Republic game was announced called Star Wars Eclipse. Uh, as you know, I am a big High Republic stan. I brought on Hope and Chris to talk about it for two and a half hours. I really love the High Republic. Uh, But unfortunately, this game is being developed by Quantic Dream, which is a French studio. There are a myriad of issues with Quantic Dream. Uh, I am not going to go into the whole thing. Plenty of other places have covered it. Uh, The Pink Milk live stream that they did, that is where I want to point people to say, here is the best place to go to really hear laid out what the issues that a lot of us have with Quantic Dream as a developer is. But as part of the overall Blackout Star Wars Eclipse movement that's happening amongst a lot of content creators, I want to be clear on the air about where we stand with regards to Star Wars Eclipse. We are not going to be promoting it on this show. We are not going to be talking about getting it on this show. Uh, I personally am not going to be giving any money to Quantic Dream. If we talk about it, it will be in the same context that we talk about things like Karen Travis or Gina Carano in the context of the larger franchise. But I'm going to avoid going forward, giving as much time and air as possible to Quantic Dream. It probably is not going to come up. We still have not talked about Star Wars Squadrons barely at all. We talked about Fallen Order a little bit, but we're not a video game show. This is easier for us than others. Uh, It's awesome to see a lot of content creators pledging not to cover it and not to promote it. But that is our current stance on the issue is we're not going to bring it up except in the context if it adds anything to the larger franchise. And even if we do that, it will be with a disclaimer the same way we do everything else like this. So. I want to get that out of the way and get that on the air unambiguously. That is where we currently stand. Go and check out the Pink Milk live stream as well as other content creators who are going into detail on why a lot of us are taking that stance. So that was serious. Bradley, let's do uh, a fun thing now. Are you ready for the thing Charles fucked up? Yes, that, I love that. That's the best segment. That's the best segment. The thing Charles fucked up. 
on the holiday special episode, uh, I mentioned being confused as a kid and possibly thinking that Lumpy, who is Chewbacca's son, became a Jedi. As it turned out, uh, I was kind of right about that. It is not Lumpy, but there was a Wookiee Jedi during the sort of New Jedi Order time frame of Legends named Lobaka. And I thought, Bradley, since you don't know anything about Legends, that we could play a fun game <laughs> with this information. Okay. So we're going to play Two Truths and a Lie for oh, the Wookiee Jedi Lobaka. I'm going to read to you three statements. Okay. about Lobaka, and you are going to tell me which one of them is a lie. Oh, God. Okay. You ready? Yes. So, number one, Lobaka is Chewbacca's cousin. Okay. Number two, Lobaka has a unique lightsaber color. That color is bronze. Okay. Number three, Lobaka once joined a terrorist group of non-humans called the Diversity Alliance. Hmm. Which one of those is a lie? Okay. Knowing what I know from the last episode where you talked about people's children and their dumbass names that are the same names as their fathers and their grandfathers or whatever, um, I'm going to go with Yes, he is the cousin of Chewbacca because their names are too similar. So that makes sense. And then I'm going to go with, yes, why wouldn't there be a stupid storyline where he joins a resistance group of non-humans named the Diversity Lovers or whatever they're called? Diversity Alliance, which is Alliance. somehow worse. Okay, so Diversity Alliance. I'm going to say Diversity Alliance is true. And then Chewbacca's cousin is definitely true. So I think the lie is the lightsaber color. You have clearly not listened to as much Rupert pod race as I have. <laughs> clearly. Because I, I have deceived you. <gasps> oh no. I have deceived you using a clever trick that they do by taking a true fact and adjusting it just slightly. So he's his so second the lie cousin. I'm just so <laughs> Lobaka is Chewbacca's nephew. Oh, you not bitch. his cousin. That is cheating. He is his nephew. He does have a unique bronze lightsaber, and he did join a terrorist group called the Diversity Alliance. Damn. Yeah, Lobaka, a uh, Wookiee Wookie Jedi during the New Republic era of Legends. That was Thanks. a thing that did happen. Thanks. I hate it. <laughs> oh oh one day i will just we'll do an episode where i'll read you all of the shit that happened in legends just yeah. all of the craziest stuff i can find uh, and just watch as your face melts in horror it'll be our exclusive video content for i was you. gonna say that should be like a game show like uh star wars legends or not like it's so like Rupe a... helps pod race <laughs> Rupe helps pod race actually does do a section it's my favorite section of the show mm. Okay. called is it legends or did i just make it up i adjusted it slightly to be two truths and a lie right but what they do is they pick whole sections of things and they read them out and the other hosts have to guess whether or not it's legends <laughs> or whether or not the speaker just made it up gotcha i'm i'm decent at that segment like they find some weird shit though they okay. find some well. absolutely weird shit but speaking of things that happened in Legends uh, that are now happening in canon, <laughs> let's get to the meat of this episode. As of recording this, it is 7.32 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on December the 22nd. So if anything has happened with Book of Boba in the last week, <laughs> uh, we do not know about it. <laughs> right. We are recording this as close as we can to the 27th air date right? to give it time, but this is where we're at. So we're only going to be covering things released up to the 22nd. Bradley, why don't you go ahead and take us in? You just recently watched all of the promotional footage again. All of the promotional footage. <laughs> How so, did that yeah. go for you? 
It's interesting. So Disney's doing this weird thing right now. I don't know if it started with Book of Boba or if there was another one that started it, but they did it with Spider-Man No Way Home. They did it with Book of Boba. So I don't know if this is just a trend moving forward just to get views on their YouTube or something or whatever, but they're doing all these things where they they release the official teaser trailer slash regular full-size trailer, and then they give us little mini... 30 second trailers that they give different names to and they also release those so it's a very interesting like nothing's ever super new it's like maybe one or two clips that are usually like new every time you watch it so i don't know and i've made a note of which like things like which different shots that are different in each one but honestly like for the most part they're all generally the same as the full size official trailer so what i want to do is i want to say like what is your favorite thing from the trailer and what is your least favorite thing from the trailer? <laughs> okay, we'll go ahead and do this. No, it it harkens back to the days where you would get like maybe like two trailers for a movie and then right. a lot of the stuff would come from TV spots. So mm-hmm. they would say, watch this and such at this time to see a, a TV spot for Attack of the Clones. And it would be just that. It would be mostly stuff from the trailer and there'd be maybe one or two new shots in there. My favorite and my least favorite thing from the trailers. I'll start with the thing that I I didn't like. I'm not going to say I didn't like it. I found it weird. Is the cadence of the clip they released is a lot slower than I was expecting. Like just the conversation that they're having. There's a lot of pauses in between the lines of dialogue. Do you think we're being marveled? I think we're being marveled. Like where they changed the pacing of everything just to make it seem like it's fitting the tone of the trailer, not the actual tone of the episode. Like it's not the speed of the episode. It was a clip. Oh, okay. It was a clip and the like they were they were talking and then there was a significant pause. Maybe I'm just starting to notice these things because I've been editing our TikToks. Mm. And when I animate those, I have to be cognizant of exactly where the pauses are. I see. So it could be ruining that for myself. I would say that's the only thing that struck me as a little bit weird. I know they've said, and this will be important, that all of the footage comes from like the first half of the first episode. Right. If they just don't want to give anything away, which on the one hand, I get that. On the other hand, I'm like, <sighs> tells you nothing. Because they're the show. showing the same footage over and <laughs> yeah, over again. Exactly. Like, tells Boba you Fett is in it. We yeah, know. We know. And we it know. almost seems like they're it, it it almost seems like they're using footage from Mandalorian too too much. Like they keep using that same shot of them sitting on yeah. the throne with the you know the um the spotchka or whatever. And yeah, it's like that's from Mandalorian. That's not from Book of Boba. So I don't know if they're just reusing the shot, like and then in this like the end or the beginning of the episode, they'll be reusing that same shot. Well, here's one thing that gets me is um, that the most interesting stuff that's being talked about Mm -hmm. is like the the shots that don't necessarily have Boba Fett or Fennec Shand in them. Mm. Because people want to know about what else is going on in the show. Like there's one shot of Jennifer Beals as a Twi'lek that I've seen probably about 100,000 times. Yeah, because that's like the main focus of the trailer. Well, it's like one shot, like real fast. Mm-hmm. But people are posting it because they're like, who is this person? Right, right, right. The authorian is being posted as like, who is this person? Right. You know, we don't know who any of the other characters in this show are mm-hmm. besides Finnick and Boba. So one thing I really liked was I like seeing the different angles on Jabba's palace. Mm-hmm. So we're seeing the hangar. In a flashback, we see Jabba's quarters, which is at the top of the thing, apparently, which I thought was really cool. So as far as Jabba's palace go, it's a location that's grown on me over the last 20 years. It wasn't my favorite part of Return of the Jedi, but the location itself is growing on me, especially Mm -hmm. having like played through the Lego games and watched the Clone Wars and things like that. So I'm interested to see different angles on this building. Right. What about you, Bradley? One thing you liked and one thing you didn't. Um, one thing I liked is actually I literally wrote this down. New Twilight Lady. Like, who is she? Like, da, 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 da. I'm very intrigued by her. Like, who is this person? Like, and it's not just her, because then there's also a, a yellow Twilight Lady, like right next to her, um, who is probably either her, you know, 
right hand maiden or something. It's her girlfriend. Of, yeah. It's assistant. her girlfriend. She's a lesbian and it's her girlfriend. Oh my God. Okay. Um, I mean, I wouldn't go there, but um, this is canon until I say it is not canon. <laughs> okay, great. Um, the one thing that I, I actually did not like though um, in the trailer, and I only, that's why the only reason why I even brought this up and one thing you didn't like, one thing you did like. And to be fair, this could be pre visual effects, you know, because it is a trailer, but I know because, exactly what you're going to say. And because it is a trailer, I never give my full review on something until you see the final footage right until it's in there but because the fact that they're giving us this trailer it means that the whole entire season is done they're not you know editing still like it's done so i'm gonna say it's the uh spider droid in the very first second of the trailer is just does not look right it doesn't look real it doesn't look it looks bad like it looks like bad animation it does not look good it doesn't look like I think it's like, stop motion. I don't think it's that at all. I think it's terrible CGI. Hmm. Cause I've been burned before on that by thinking something's terrible CGI and then it turns out it's stop motion. If it was stop motion, I think it would be better. Actually, I think what they should have done is they should have done puppet work with an actual life-sized one like they did in whatever Return of the Jedi where they took an actual like, you know, it's, it's clearly like a physical thing in the scene. And then they just had it in the background so where you couldn't see it very closely. So it was like, eh, I don't know what that is, but yeah. For how grounded the rest of the trailer is, it was a bit weird that they opened on that shot. And it almost looks like it's kind of like ice skating. I like to say that when it doesn't look like it's touching the ground, when CGI doesn't look like it's there, I call it ice skating because it's not physically touching the ground. So it almost looks like it's hovering when it steps, when it on the things. And so that's what I, it's just because like shadows and everything, you just can't get it perfectly right. And so I don't know. I just didn't like the spider droid. Okay. I'm not going to like it now. And I'm not going to like it when the show airs. Okay. Mr. I've <laughs> never changed my mind on anything ever. <laughs> anyway, um, that was just one thing I didn't really like. But then again, I love seeing all the different aliens. So I'll just, I'll lump them all together. So I like the Twilight Lady. I love the different um, aliens we get to see. The, I don't know what they're called. They're like, can we dog talk people. about. Can we can we talk about the Gamorian guards in fucking leather harnesses though? <laughs> oh my god, why are you like keep bringing this up? Like, <laughs> I they can't I have wear not shirts. Stopped bringing this up. They can't listeners. wear shirts because they're too big. Uh huh. That's what most of the people at the Eagle say. Right. Oh, That's my shirt what fell they off. Say. Oh, my shirt fell off. It's probably this <laughs> harness that I was wearing underneath it. It just, it doesn't fit. I accidentally oh, ripped pointing. my shirt off. I, I like the idea that it's like Boba and Phoenix, either Boba and Phoenix mandate or something, or Boba's like, yeah, dude, I'm the 800 pound gorilla. I don't give a shit. Like, dress however yeah. you want. Uh, I'm not going to make my servants dress a certain way because I find everything attractive. And so the Gamora guards are like, cool, leather harnesses. That's Let's right. go. Because you and I both know, Bradley, gay men who, if you gave them the chance to wear a leather harness around their office job, That's they right. would do it. I like to canonically think that all Gamorrean guards are just gay men. And then like, there's no females in their species. So they're all like, that's why they all were like, they're all circuit queens. So they all they're like, all that's, circuit all, queens. that's all they do. That's it. I love when they're it. not, when they're not guarding Java's palace, they're, they're at that circuit party. That's that explains a lot of things. Yep. There you go. I explained the whole Maybe. thing away. That when you think about it, that explains why there's a disco ball on Jabba's sail barge in Lego Star Wars 2 yeah, and Lego yeah, Star yeah. Wars The Complete Saga is it's yeah, the Gamorrean yeah. guards are having their leather circuit party raves on the 100, sail barge. 100%. All they're off. Yeah, I mean, that's as good of an explanation as any. No, I really, I agree with you. Like, the creature designs are really cool. We've got the Athorian too. Mm-hmm. Now, that's probably not Doc Gondar. I have a theory about who that is, but I've met Doc Gondar, and that doesn't look like Doc Gondar. Mm. Oh, that's right. You have met. I've uh, met Doc Gondar. So, no, uh, it's actually funny. So in that same scene with him, you see he has a Twi'lek male, I don't want to say servant because that sounds weird, but I think he's like his, like, you know, 
right hand man i guess that's a better way to say it yeah he's um, like his, his his bib fortuna basically he has his own bib fortuna I, and he has his own apparently, bib fortuna. right and in a different uh there's a different trailer where we get a really good look at the actor who plays him um because we get a more frontal view i think in the original trailer it's only like him yeah kind of like speaking into his ear essentially but we get a really good look in one of the trailers of that guy and you're like he looks familiar i don't know who the actor is but i know i know who he is so when we get to that episode when we that get part, to that episode we'll go through who the I'll actors know. are i'll know who it is i bet you all know who it is because he looked so familiar in the trailer and i was like he is from something i know it and i it's gonna click once we watch the episode i'm gonna be like it's from that show well he says who he's working for in one of the trailers he says he's working for the mayor of one of the settlements i can't I can't remember offhand because I didn't watch them all today. Uh, I meant to, but Hawkeye had its season finale today and it was really good. And I have the rising storm on audiobook to prepare for the fallen star. And I just kind of forgot, hmm. but ah, yes. I know he says he works for the mayor. Of, it's either Anchorhead or Moss Eisley. I think it's Moss Eisley. Hmm. He says that he's like, he works for the mayor. I think that's who the authorian is. Interesting. That's yeah, I, yeah, I think he does. Because, And also, I in the first trailer, you know, we get the shot of the big city slash possibly capital of the planet. Like, I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I think that's what everybody's kind of trying to figure out. They're like, what the fuck is this giant ass fucking city on Tatooine? Like, it makes no sense. Like, Where like, is Jabba's <laughs> palace relative to the other cities? Because we only Clearly. know, we, we know three cities, Mos Eisley, Mos Espa, and Anchorhead. And they're all boonies. Like, they're all like, you know, yeah. like in the middle of nowhere. Like, well, no, Mos Eisley seems plot, pretty big. Plot twist. Tashi Station is the capital of Tatooine. Oh my God. Can you imagine if that was actually true? Like, what if they, like, that's what if they genuinely are like, welcome to Tashi Station, the city the of capital whatever. Of like, yeah. yeah. Like, it's one of those, th- it's one of those things where you have like a city that's like one house. Yeah. That's for some reason is its own city. But it's like they've decided, like, maybe they had to name a capital for Tatooine. So they're like, uh, it's this random fucking gas station in the middle of nowhere. This is our capital now. I like to think of Tashi Station as just it's just one of the subway stops that Luke gets off of, and that's just where all of his friends hang out. They're just like, ah, we just get off of Tashi Station. Like that's where all the cool kids hang out. Oh yeah, just just chilling. Yeah, I live in Los Angeles, and that's definitely a thing here that you'll see kids just like hanging out at the metro stations. There you go. Uh, Or at least like you did before (laughs) the dark times, right? So one thing I've actually done, Bradley, when you talk about the different scenes is, so I, they have said that all of these scenes are from the first half of the first episode. Okay. So I have pieced together, for the record, what I feel the order of these scenes is. Oh, okay. Definitively, this is what I feel like the order of the scenes is. So I feel like we're going to open on a flashback. I feel like we're going to open on the flashback of the Tusken Raiders finding him. Okay. And putting him in the back to tank and him waking up. And then we're going to cut to the present. And the next scene is the scene where they're in like the Jabba's quarters area and he's getting dressed and Fennec is talking to it. So that's the, the first present scene. Because he's getting ready to go to the dinner party scene that we see him having with the Trandoshan. He goes down, he's talking to some of Jabba's vassals, and he's like, hey, let's work together. And this does not go well. This is not successful. We get another flashback. Possibly this is where the flashback of him, like, them entering the palace goes. Either that or this will be it. That'll be at the beginning. But that this is where I'm going to put it. I'm going to say that after the dinner party and it doesn't go well. And he's like, well, we need to get more people. Uh, there's another flashback of them coming in. And then jumps back to the present. This is when the envoy to the mayor shows up. Okay. And they have this sort of meeting. Boba's like, okay, I'm going to go out and talk to the vassals. Some of Jabba's vassals. So they go out and they're doing that. They're talking... Uh, they get ambushed by the guys in red. 
who are probably sent by the mayor. Right. They get ambushed. They wind up winning. And they go in and they talk to the mayor, who's the authorian guy. And that's where a twist happens in the episode. And that's all the footage they used up to that point. Interesting. That's my theory for the rough order of how those scenes go. The city sequence. Right, because in The Mandalorian, you know, there's the episode where Boba pops up and he's wearing his robe outfit. He gets his armor and it's kind of crappy. And then he gets his armor fixed by the next episode, right? So my theory is that either Book of Boba takes place in between those two episodes Mm -hmm. where his armor is kind of dirty and then where his armor is kind of cleaned up or there is a first half of the season of this show or something like that where it's going to kind of simultaneously take place where they kind of go off and do stuff with Din and then come back. So that could also be a thing. I'm not sure. You think this could go back and show things that are happening simultaneously with the Mandalorian as yeah. part of its narrative? Interesting. Right. And so, so instead of taking pick up place right after Mando. Ooh. Right. I was thinking that it would take place simultaneously with Mando up until the finale. So I think it's happening kind of simultaneously. So my other wild theory about that sequence is that Cobb Banth is going to show up and be a major player in this show. Mm-hmm. And that he's going to be set up as an antagonist to Boba. Because Boba wants to run the criminal element. And Cobb Banth is a lawman. So they're going to set him up as the opposition. He's going to be the main antagonist of this series. Okay. Is, is going to be Boba Fett trying to pull the criminal underworld together. And the scene with the mayor is where they're going to meet Cobb Vanth, who's been uh, promoted from the Marshal of Mos Pelgo to this larger town. Okay. That's, that's another theory that I have. My final off-the-wall theory is that those two people that are getting beat up in the trailer look a lot like two of Luke's friends. Hmm. So I think some of Luke's friends are going to show up in this show. Tashi and Station are showing up in this show? Yes, both Tashi and Station may show up in this show. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, well, who besides Wedge is his friends? Like, I don't know. Uh, the girl or you think like named... it's Winry. Oh, is this from the deleted scene? Yeah, this is from the deleted scenes. Oh, interesting. Because is a pe- fun thing. I've, I've seen side-by-side comparisons. It, she's not named Winry. What the fuck is her name? Oh, no. I'm confusing her with the person from Full Metal Alchemist. That's Let's a see. totally different thing. but That's a very different show. So it's Cammy and either Wendy or Deke Are is you sure the other not- guy. Are you sure it's not Mala and Lumpy? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not uh, Molly and Lumpawaru. Lumpawaru is not going to show up. Lumpawaru is not going to show up in this show. God damn Uh, it, I was hoping. (laughs) He's going by Waru now. Oh, I'm sorry. By this point in the timeline? By this point in the timeline, he's going by Waru. Ugh, fine. I made a whole TikTok about this, Bradley. I know, but still. Anyway... I know you were repulsed because I used the wrong uh, title card. Oh my god. I almost had a conniption. <laughs> oh, listeners, the, the annoyed text messages he sent me about this title card. I have never heard him annoyed about <laughs> anything more than this. All right, Bradley, now that I've, I've laid out my theories, what are your wild theories? Okay, these Run are going to be off the wall, like crazy ass fucking theories. Like to the point where if they become true, I want it on the record now so that we can be like, holy shit, that right. crazy ass theory was true. Lay them on me. I have three. Okay. So uh, number one is my least likely to happen, but would be interesting to see. Um, I would be interested to see if Stinky the Hut shows up in uh, <laughs> this show as a, as a Jesus. young adult slash teen i don't know how they age so um, not them doing a rightful heir to the throne plot line with fucking rada the hut 
how fucking hilarious oh would it be God. if little Stinky shows up and he's like, don't call me Stinky. I'm, uh, no, I guess only Ahsoka called him Stinky, right? His, his name is Rada. Is that, is that it? Rada, Rada the Hut. Rada and, uh, yeah. Rada's off somewhere, wherever him and Corky Crees are hanging out as like the rightful heirs to things. While someone in Mandalorian armor steals their chair. It's so wherever people go to do that is where, where Stinky is. I love it. Okay, so my second theory, this is a little bit crazier and possibly not going to happen, um, right. is that either at the end of the show, like the finale, like the final, final thing they show us, or the actual quote-unquote antagonist and i say antagonist in quotation marks because they're not actually an antagonist because boba is technically the quote antagonist well he's even the villain he's our, but he's the protagonist that's right of uh, this story he is our protagonist so anybody else who's opposing him is quote unquote the villain right but uh, i no, might... no no actually you can be a villain protagonist anyone villain and antagonist are not the same thing bradley Okay, fine. Whoever There's this the... podcast called Star Wars English Class. I think maybe you should listen to it. So my thing is then that the antagonist of this show is going to be a good guy in our eyes. Um, and I think that that antagonist is not going to be what you said, Cobb Van. It's going to be hold your horses or your 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 baby Moochie. Um... I think that uh, oh, no. the antagonist of this season is going to be Omega as an adult. I don't think they're going to want to play their cards for the ending of Bad Batch that quickly. No, I. but that's why I said she might show up in the finale, though. If right. that's like, so like or there might be this secret. she might show secret. up in a later season, too. Right. Well, I, well, I think it also could be like, kind of like this thread of we don't really know who's the one who's messing with boba the whole time behind the scenes like it's kind of like like a lead up to like a reveal that reveal being omega and then you have all of bad batch season two to explain a little bit why she's at the level that she's at or like you know whatever because we don't need to know anything really because bad batch is taking place during her quote-unquote childhood so it's not necessarily her as an adult. You could jump forward and be like, look, she's just, I mean, it, all it does is takes the suspense level out if she's ever in danger in Bad Batch 2. But I mean, then again, that's always going to be taken out because right. she's the main character. So there's really no like threat level. But I don't know. I think it would just be interesting if Omega shows up in some capacity in this show. And then are you ready for my crazy wild bat shit crazy okay i've got my uh drink which in this case is just water okay so my crazy crazy bat shit theory crazy like legends level crazy theory i highly doubt that but please continue is that the show is not actually boba fett and that it's actually jango fett is the character that we're seeing this whole entire time sir jango fett got decapitated i know like the list of people who cannot come back in star (laughs) wars is very small like it's super tiny uh jango fett is very high up on that list i'm i know this and i'm telling you i believe what you're saying to me i'm just letting you know that somebody picked up his decapitated head attached him to a robot body and oh then my God. that is who we are oh seeing. And he believes that he is Boba Fett because that's how he's been programmed. So he doesn't actually know he's Jango Fett. Not and that'll the- be the reveal oh. of the end of the season because, you know, he fixed Fennec Shand. You know, she's already half robot anyway. So now we realize how he could do that. And that's because he's full robot. So there you go. There's my bad shit wild crazy theory <laughs> that Django Fett is our real hero this time around. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I thought you were that like that. That is one. the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. I thought you were like that. That is 
that is the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. <laughs> but see, now this makes the Omega thing not that crazy. Is this why you pitched this one? Is it so I would look at the <laughs> Omega thing and go, well, you know, that is plausible. Right? That is plausible it's for It's plausible. This. I have a, um, I made myself a bingo card in case any of this okay. stuff shows up. Um, I'll link it in uh, our Instagram story. I'll make it like a little uh, button or whatever that you can press and it'll be like its own thing. Yeah, I'll share it to our Twitter, I'm sure. It'll be, um, it's cute. I made like a cute little thing, but uh, it's all the random ass shit that I think might show up in this show. So we'll Bradley's see. Bradley's bat shit, Book of Boba Fett, conspiracy theories. Well, some of my stuff isn't weird. Like I, I put, you know, of course, our classic bounty hunters on there um, that we all know and love from Empire. So I figured like either their name mentioned or possible if they're still alive, show up. You never know. Yeah, there's um, a lot of theories floating around. The bounty hunters, yeah, like I could see Bosk showing up. That's what I'm saying. Like, Dingar is confirmed there. to be alive at this point in the timeline. Mm-hmm. You know who I think is probably not going to show up? It's probably going to be Kira. I put her on here, though. Would? I put I her on here. Would. Well, here's the thing. Right. So it's a common fallacy to say a character is getting a lot of book and comic material. They must have a big role in the upcoming project. We saw this happen with Phasma. Mm. But most famously, this happened with Aura Singh. So way back when there were message boards and things for the prequels when they were coming out, there were a lot of theories flying around that Aura Singh was going to be a much bigger deal in two and three. Because she was getting books, she was get she was getting comics, she was showing up everywhere. Well, the reason she was showing up everywhere was because they weren't using her in the movie. Right. So they told writers, you can do whatever you want with her, we don't right. care. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing with Phasma, where they were like, uh, oh, she's she's gonna be in this one scene in the movie. You can write a book about it, I guess, and do mm-hmm. a whole comic about it. Uh, with Kira, they're doing War of the Bounty Hunters. Spoilers for the comics, but like everybody knows at this point, Kira showed up again in War of the Bounty Hunters. Crimson Dawn is back. Uh, Charles Soule is currently doing a, a limited series called Crimson Rain mm-hmm. about Crimson Dawn. She's basically taking the Prince Shizor role, uh, which is weird because Prince Shizor is also canon, apparently. We don't have time for that. Moving on. Because she's showing up in the comics, I feel like she's not going to show up in Book of Boba because Charles Soule feels comfortable using her and doing sort of whatever he wants. Hmm. Now, I could be completely wrong. I I can tell you when I'm a certain she's going to show up in both the Crimson, rumored Crimson Dawn show and the announced Lando show. But I don't think she's going to show up in Book of Boba just because the comics have been using her a lot. Hmm. Well, I have her on there just in case. I also have Crimson Dawn on there just in case. You know, either, like I said, a mention or just a name drop. It doesn't necessarily have to show up. Just like, just a mention of it. So A mention. I'll keep looking at this stuff. Now we know Bradley didn't. Bradley hasn't read Crimson Rain. I have officially caught up on all the Star Wars comics. So I can talk about this from a smug sense of superiority. Uh, because I have wasted hours and hours and hours of my life reading over 200 issues of Star Wars comics. I'm also not single. I feel like that also needs to be brought up whenever I say that. Bradley has not read Crimson Rain, so he doesn't know what's alluded to happen in the Hidden Empire. I know what happens. Moochie shows up and everybody's like, hey, Moochie, welcome. That's that will be a wild theory for you. Moochie shows up in Book of Boba. I honestly, though, like why like why would they even bring Moochie up in Bad Batch and show fucking Bid Fortuna in that episode being like, oh look, you found Moochie for me. Thank you so much. And then like takes, you know, Moochie. <laughs> why is Bid Fortuna Italian? I you know what? That's just what I was going with. Um, I don't really I know. I serve it a hot. I make it a pizza. <laughs> You know that all the great are Italian, so. is displeased with you. Oh my god! Oh wait, aren't they? <laughs> wait, they're French, aren't they? Not Italian. The Twi'leks. Yeah. Generally, the Twi'leks are. They have are like French. a French. Yeah. Okay. They have a French accent because George Lucas is a, a creep. Right. Yeah. Uh, 
okay well that was there that was the that's, worst that's... italian accent i've done oh lord i well, have one friend i'm very glad does not listen to this show uh otherwise he would show up at my apartment uh and and probably bludgeon me uh to death with a uncooked pizza if he heard me doing an italian accent like that i also thought it would be fun if either um some other clones show up I don't know if that's possible at this point in the timeline, just because they basically be dead, you know, old people wise. Um, So, but they, or they could just be really, really old, you know, and that, that could also be an interesting thing. Like if he just happens across another clone, I don't know if that would be weird or not, but it would just be an interesting, I would love to see Tamora Morrison talk to Tamora Morrison on screen. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to see what that would look like. To Tamora Morrison, talk to Tamora Morrison again. Yeah. Yeah. How interesting would that be? Like non CGI, like a true, like he can be like Bo- Boba and then they all they have to do is make him look even older. Got reverse like, shot to yeah. Morrison with himself. Exactly. And it would be great. Oh man. Oh man. And then you could even hire, you know, like, I don't know how this would work, but you can get, you know, a younger, somewhat looking like tomorrow Morrison person to play younger clones in like flashbacks or whatever you want to do you know what i mean like so just a body double and like yeah face mask him on there like they did yep. with tarkin and leia and Rogue yeah because if you do it very minimally it might actually work and since they've already kind of practiced with you know luke and mando too you can kind of do like a little bit more shorter scenes not as close up and kind of you know in the backgrounds or you can kind of make it you know not as like a focus of the scene and then it might work better so i don't know hmm. do you have any other wild and crazy conspiracy theories for us bradley i'm hoping that some huts show up i want to see some more huts that's my only other thing like, i want to see, see the huts, huts with abs i want to see yeah i want to see a real hut i want to see huts with abs like i'm assuming comics. I'm assuming since Rada clearly did not grow up in Jabba's palace because Jabba's a Disney not father. There. So I'm assuming that he would be, I don't know, maybe he's like super ripped. We don't know. We'll find out. Yeah, because uh, spoilers for War of the Bounty Hunters. So Darth Vader murdered the entire Hut Council between the events of Empire and Jedi. And basically Jabba was the only one left which is why they didn't sweep in to take his stuff, which is why Boba's able to do it. So, I don't know, because Stinky wasn't there when that happened. Uh, Presumably, we know if he was, that Vader would have no problem killing a a youngling. Particularly not that youngling. I'm sure he would be A-OK with killing that one. No. Uh, do you have any final thoughts for us, Bradley, before we move into uh, our coverage for Book of Boba? You know, I, I have go- I'm i going into this show with zero expectations because it's such a random thing that we weren't expecting. I think most people were genuinely surprised when they said Book of Boba at the end of Mando 2. And I think we were all going like, huh? Like, we weren't asking for this show. So it's very interesting to see, like, them go into what everyone assumed Mandalorian was going to be about before we knew anything about Mandalorian. They never said it was Boba Fett was the focus, but you know, you kind of thought like, okay, well, the show is called the Mandalorian. So it's obviously going to be like the Boba Fett show when clearly it wasn't. And then we go, Oh, great. We didn't know we wanted this show and we're glad we got this show, but now you're actually giving us the Boba Fett show that nobody thought they were going to get. And so now it's very interesting to see where this goes, because I feel like some people have very high expectations of Boba Fett and some people just don't care. So I guess it just depends on where you fall on that side of the spectrum. But I'm excited with zero expectations and I think I'll enjoy it a lot because it'll be a nice getting away from our Mando story. My final thoughts is that if you have not gone and watched Under the Helmet, the Boba Fett documentary, uh, please go and do that. Uh, it is not going to tell you much about Book of Boba Fett, the show, but it's it's really good and it's really cute. And they got George Lucas and they got Ben Burt and 
Daniel Logan's in it and he tells a story, a cute story about his kid and a Boba Fett action figure that I need everyone to know about. So if you have not watched that documentary, please go and do that before Book of Boba comes out. It's 20 minutes. I watched it on a lunch break. You'll be fine. Yeah, I'm excited to get into our Book of Boba coverage. We are doing the first episode and the last episode by ourselves. And we have got guests currently tentatively for every other episode. I'm not sure which guest is doing which episode, so I'm not going to announce them yet. But I do have guests for all of those episodes lined up. So our coverage is going to be a little different than Bad Batch, um, but we hope people enjoy it all the same. Bradley, I will uh, see you on the other side of the Book of Boba Fett premiere. Let's do it. Thank you for listening to Gold Squadron Gaze. Did we forget something? Email us at goldsquadrongaze at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter at goldsquadgaze, and you can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at goldsquadrongaze. Subscribe to us on YouTube at Gold Squadron Gaze, where we post this podcast as well as exclusive video content. Please join us next week and every week for another episode of Gold Squadron Gaze. A lot of pauses. Give me one second. <laughs> Give me one second. I just turned off both of my monitors. Uh, and you also got a phone call, apparently. <laughs>